if you have decided that someone is not right for you, then you've also decided that you are not right for them. That's the piece that I think is truly missing and what makes people feel like such bad people when they cut people off. What's up little sis? My name is Rima and you are now tuned in to another episode of the Arab and Thriving show. Today I wanna talk about something that I've kind of become really good at with time. I wanna use the phrase, it's releasing people. I know that we use the term, you know, cutting people off, which that's kind of the term that I've been using my whole life. But with the perspective shift that I'm going to share with you today, I've realized that the more accurate way to describe what is happening is that you're actually releasing people who are not right for you in the same ways that you are not right for them. You know, it's funny because my, my favorite teacher in high school gave me this advice that I didn't take until way later in my life. She pulled me to the side one day randomly in class. I think I was a junior or senior in high school at this point. And she was like, listen, Rima, if you are constantly spending your energy trying to pull people up, pull people up, at some point, they're gonna start pulling you back down. You need to learn when to let go of those people so that they don't pull you down with them. And I just remember feeling really confused <laughs> I honestly had no clue which of the people in my life she was telling me that about because I had a lot of close friends who were also students in her class. My ex-boyfriend in high school at the time, I'm like, okay, she knows I'm with him. Like, I didn't really know who she was referring to, but I remember it made me feel really guilty, which I think is why I didn't even ask her for clarity on it. I just felt like what a terrible, <laughs> as much as I valued her wisdom and advice, what a terrible image that I'm trying to pull people up if that's even the case. And I just imagined letting go of them and letting them fall. And it just felt so terrible and mean, you know, and ruthless. So obviously, again, I didn't apply that at the time because I didn't even know where to apply it. But later on in life, when I did make the executive decision to cut a lot of people off, I remember grappling with that feeling again because it truly felt like I was abandoning them. It came from this place of like, I'm onto better things and I'm just leaving them behind. But then I had to check myself and realize, especially cause I'm such a spiritual person and I truly believe that like God has a plan for me and I'm supposed to spend every day on this earth just uncovering what that plan is and, and acting in alignment towards that plan. If I believe that, then I must also believe that God has a plan for those people too. And if I've decided that they are not in alignment with me in the plan, like the, the journey that I'm on, then I must not be in alignment for them either. I think that was a really nice level set where it no longer became this image of me letting people go. It became this image of us like walking in lockstep and then one day one of us or both of us mutually deciding to go in a different direction. And so it's not like I walk in a different direction and leave them behind and they, they just stay there for the rest of their life. Like no, that's, that's such a self-centered, arrogant way of looking at the world. You're not cutting them off and their, their journey just stops there. You're you're actually releasing them from your journey so that they can go on and do what it is that they're meant to do. I was literally forced into a situation where I had to cut a bunch of people off. In 2017, right after my dad passed away, and if you've watched other YouTube videos, this is such a pivotal time period of my life for obvious reasons. Like it was like the first big tragedy that I'd experienced. I was 24 at the time, so I was still learning myself. So it was like all of these different things happening at once. And I remember there were two people in my life at the time who I was spending a lot of time with and who I was really close to that internally I just felt like I needed to let them go. I needed to just like distance myself. I didn't think of it in terms of cutting them off. I thought of it in terms of like, I don't know what it is, but all I know is I don't feel right around these people. This was the first time I wanna say in my whole life that I understood that not every feeling needs to immediately or ever really make sense. I am somebody who tries to rationalize everything. I try to make sense of everything I feel, even when I'm PMSing. It's like, I don't allow that to be an excuse sometimes. It's like, no, no, I wanna get to the bottom of my feelings. I felt like this because that thing triggered me. Or I felt like this because that reminded me of that other time. Like I'm always trying to make meaning of the things I feel, which is great, but sometimes it's unnecessary. Sometimes you just need to really let your feelings be enough. You need to trust that your body is reacting to something your intuition is telling you something that you might not ever understand really 
And sometimes that's just enough. I didn't have that language at the time and I wish I did, which is why I'm telling you it because even though I ultimately made the decision to, to release these two people, it was my childhood best friend and a toxic relationship that I honestly should have released years before it started. I felt so, so, so guilty. I felt like a bad person. I felt like I wasn't able to commit to the people in my life. I wasn't able to show up when in reality, I just needed to be there for myself with everything that I was going through. And so in a lot of ways, I'm so, so, so grateful because I don't think that had I been through that, I would have understood that it's okay to just release people. It doesn't mean that you hate them. It doesn't mean you need to make them out to be a bad person. You're just not right for each other. If you're going through something where you feel called to cut someone off, I don't know if it's a romantic relationship, maybe even like a family member, which is incredibly difficult, especially if you come from a culture like mine. If you feel the need to distance yourself from somebody, I want you to number one understand that that feeling can be enough there's something going on okay and sometimes it's a you problem let me just say that like they don't have to always do something wrong for you to not feel safe in their presence sometimes you do need that distance for you to be able to re-evaluate your own whatever's going on with you and ultimately to even get to a point to decide like oh I was just projecting or oh I was dealing with jealousy or whatever it is right like you're not going to come to that understanding you know most of the time when you're in it sometimes you just need distance and it's that distance doesn't always need to turn into just making this permanent decision of releasing this person I will say with those two people that I ultimately cut off I did not intend for it to be this permanent thing I just knew that okay my dad just died I'm literally on an airplane to Lebanon with my family about to bury him I don't feel comforted by these people in my life so I need to do what's best for me right now I need to protect my peace because truly and honestly I felt like I was choosing between me and them and so obviously at that moment I was choosing myself what happened right after that I was not prepared for and it's that I immediately felt better it was like I don't know if you've ever experienced this but it was like you know when you just make a decision you don't know how you're gonna feel about it and then the next day you just feel like all of this newfound energy all of this newfound happiness this joy that you're like where has this been all along and you're like oh I've been operating from a negative place because of a couple of sources of that negativity in my life and it took for me to remove them from my life it's kind of like an elimination diet to figure out what's making your face break out and you're like I needed to remove them from my life for me to understand that like I could have been feeling better this whole time so I just want to put that out there because that might happen another thing that I want you to be prepared for is to be gravely <laughs> gravely misunderstood I was not prepared for that as a Libra I like everyone to understand me. I like for my intentions to be clear. As a recovering people pleaser, it does not make me feel good if I feel that I've hurt somebody. I've had to have this conversation actually with my husband so many times where I'm like reminding him of this mantra that I'm learning to live by, where it's like someone's reaction doesn't mean, like if someone had a negative reaction to something you did or said, that doesn't always mean that what you did or said was negative. Sometimes it, it does, don't get me wrong. I'm not like trying to preach a lack of accountability because I'm very, very, very much of a believer in self-awareness, self-reflection, accountability. But I think a lot of times we're raised to believe that if someone doesn't like something you did, then that automatically means that you did something wrong. That was what I was operating out of. I'm like, oh my God, these people are really mad at me. Even though I tried to explain myself, I tried to be as honest as I could be, they're really mad. So that must mean that I'm a bad person or they really don't understand why I did it or they really, really didn't understand why I did that thing. That must mean that I'm a terrible person and I'm a bad friend. The reality is people will look at you and the things that you do through their own lens. They're going to be projecting oftentimes how they feel about themselves. In the ex guy's case, he truly had abandonment issues. So of course, He's not gonna look at it as you were negative, you were low-key abusive, you were really mean, and that's why she moved on from you. <laughs> You're gonna look at it like, oh, everybody abandons me. People are going to look at the experiences that they have through the lens of their past experiences. That's not on you, that's on their therapist. And I don't mean that in a funny way, I mean that in a serious way. If someone has abandonment issues and you decide to move on from them or release them. That does not mean that you've abandoned them. That means they have a wound that you were not prepared to heal 
nor are you responsible for. And I just want you to think about that. When it comes to making decisions like the relationships that you have in your life, people who are operating from a healed perspective, if you've done it in a respectful way, I do wanna emphasize that, there is a disrespectful way to treat people. If you've done it from a place of self-love and respect for that person, someone who's healed will understand that you're just going through something or you just need other energy around you and they're not going to take it so personally. But chances are, if you are releasing yourself of these people, it might be due to the fact that their energy is an unhealed negative energy. So please prepare to be so misunderstood, prepare for them to make it all about them and for them to take it personal. And that is not on you. The next thing I want you to think about here is to set your boundaries firmly but be flexible when you reevaluate those boundaries. What does that mean? What that means is you can set a firm boundary for a week and then the next week think about that boundary and be like, actually, I don't need this to be here anymore. Or actually, I can make some exceptions to this. I think this is like the nuance that's lacking in the boundaries conversation where it's like, you might need a boundary in place for a season because you're going through something. That doesn't mean that just because this is the rule you set with your relationships, that that needs to be a rule for the rest of your life. So I'll give you an example with the friend that I released from my life, the childhood friend. I would run into this person for years. Like every time I go back to my hometown, I run into this person at least one time. Every single time I run into them, we have like a positive exchange. It's a decent exchange. Sometimes that exchange even isn't just in person, but it's through text message afterwards, like so nice seeing you, blah, blah, blah. And every single time I reevaluate my boundary and I'm like, do I wanna re-engage with this person? Like, am I ready to have them back in my life? And there were a couple times where I was like, yeah, you know, maybe I am ready. But I think that if I'm gonna be real with you, I was like coming still from a place of guilt of like okay my, my dad died five years ago at this point i'm okay now to deal with some bullshit <laughs> when in reality like the energy never felt compatible so even when i did reevaluate the boundary and even though it was a positive experience seeing this person the energy still didn't feel compatible and so i ultimately decided over and over again that i don't actually want to re-engage and to be honest i don't think they want to re-engage with me either like i don't like it's not just a one-sided thing. I don't think that they want me back in their life either. But the point that I'm making is if you set a boundary with somebody and your paths cross again, feel free to reevaluate it. And if the energy again is just not compatible, then go about your way. But if the energy for whatever reason feels compatible again, like you don't have to just double down because that's a decision that you made in a different season when you were going through different things. And the reason I'm saying all of this is because I think that under understanding that a boundary doesn't need to be permanent will allow you to give yourself grace when you are setting those boundaries. It doesn't have to be a forever thing. You're not tattooing it on your life. It's just something that you need in place until further notice. After I went through this round of kind of distancing myself, that was like round one. And I think that was the emergency round. Like if there was an Excel spreadsheet, those people were highlighted in red. There were also people highlighted in orange or yellow or like, you know, like people that weren't necessarily sucking the life out of me, but were also not adding anything to my life. And so over those years, I started learning to reevaluate all of my relationships and not only distance myself from the ones that I didn't feel were actually adding that value or again, like releasing them so that we can all go on our own way and do what we need to do. But I started noticing that as I was moving away from the wrong people, I was creating so much space for the right people to come and find me. There is no chance, and people talk about this all the time, like with dating, you're not going to meet the right guy if you're dating clowns. And the reason being, I mean, there's the technical reason of like, you're just spending a lot of time with a clown. And so you're not like freeing your time for the right person. But that's like the less compelling argument to me. To me, the more compelling argument is if you are entertaining a clown, you are exhibiting or exuding circus-like energy. You're not going to attract a king by acting like you're in a circus and that's just one metaphor but we can even bring that to friends or or even like business relationships if you are entertaining people that are toxic or negative or gossipy you're not going to attract people that like to talk about their careers and their visions and who have an abundance mindset if you're constantly around and i had to challenge myself on this if you're constantly around women who operate from a scarcity mindset who are shit talking other girls, who are making fun of people who do things like this and start a YouTube channel or, or just do different stuff. You're not going to attract the people in your life
life, who are collaborative and who are cheering for you when you win. Understand that aside from just the physical or mental space that you'll be creating for new relationships and, and new opportunities, it's also the energy field that you are operating in when you are around people who do not match the energy of the people you are trying to attract. It seems super abstract, but I promise you, like energy is a magnet. It is a freaking magnet. When you're pulling yourself or allowing your relationships to pull you in so many different directions, then you have chaotic ass energy. So what are you going to attract? Chaotic ass people. It works every time. But I noticed when I really started to be intentional about the people in my life, I started really, really attracting opportunities. I started attracting relationships from a place of intentionality. It got to the point where when I was in business school, a lot of cute guys, not gonna lie, cute, successful. I literally used to be like, this was before Ahmed and I started talking. If you're not my husband, I don't wanna talk to you. I just had that confidence where I was just like, I wanna just put people in the friend zone because I want them to know how serious I am. I'm serious. So if you're approaching me with some bullshit, like I'm going to literally filter you at the door. And it really changed the dynamic of my relationship with those people. If you don't have the energy of being able to say that and be serious, and if your actions don't align, like if you say something like that, but then you're like entertaining BS, I don't recommend that one liner for everyone, but it's less about that and more about the seriousness that I approached my life through that people could feel. The guys that were interested romantically who were not ready to be that way, we became became such good friends and it was like truly like a friend zone for real for real to this point like they know Ahmed and they respect my relationship now shortly after that because I was operating out of that energy field of being serious of being intentional of being ready Ahmed and I met less than a year later well we, we kind of knew each other but that's a video for another day things move pretty quickly relatively quickly between us because of how serious my energy was and how serious his energy was I just want you to know that there is a lot of guilt and shame involved in having to release relationships that were super important to you. These are people that you may have had in your life forever. What is waiting for you on the other end of making decisions that feel right in your spirit is always going to be so much greater than what you think you're losing. I understand that you might feel like a bad person, you're probably going to be the bad person in a lot of people's stories and that's just truly something you cannot control. Let go of the attachment to controlling the narrative. Like I wish someone freaking drilled that into my head. I would have behaved so much differently in my 20s. Let go of the attachment of controlling the narrative, okay? If it was your story to write, you would be the main character in that story. You're not. You're the main character in your story. You cannot control whether or not you're the hero or the villain in someone else's story that's quite literally not your place and none of your business so release the need to edit that story and try to make them understand you because trust me it's only gonna make it worse but if you are feeling a pull to release certain people from your life even just for a season maybe you just need a break follow it there is a reason not just for you but also for them there is a reason why you are being asked and pushed and urged to be more intentional about your relationships. I feel like this can be a super cutthroat topic and I hope you know that like, yes, be cutthroat about your life and your decisions. You don't have to be cutthroat about the approach that you take or the way that you treat that person. So let me know if you have any questions about this or if there are any topics related to this that you want me to cover. I love you so much and as always, stay powerful, my loves.